Hi, Josh here, and today we're talking about three phase. Now this video will be the opening to a series devoted to upgrading my phase converter, but more on that later. First, let's discuss what three phase is. The most notable difference between single phase and three phase power is that three phase power uses a third conductor. This third conductor allows a third or two additional phases to develop. Confused? Yeah, some graphics will probably help. This first graph is a rem representation of what comes out of your outlet. Now I should mention that these graphs are not to scale in any way, shape, or form. They're only for representation purposes only. Anyway, this graph shows is all this graph is is a sine wave. But notice where the uh, graph crosses the y-axis. At this point, there is zero voltage across the two lines that come out of your outlet. Now around this point there is little there is some potential but there isn't much this means that not there's not a whole lot of current that a device can draw at this time you get past that onto the hills you get a, you get your 110 volts from bottom of the graph to top of the graph but in these areas there is very little voltage this doesn't mean much for your home appliance but when you get start getting into large amp draws like motors this can become a big deal now look at this second graph. You can see that there is a lot more even potential or voltage than the first graph. There are three different sine waves. The, there is the first sine wave that we saw on the first graph, but there's an additional two other sine waves. Each one of these sine waves is 100 degrees out of phase of the previous sine wave. So you have the original, then 180, and then another 180. That last one is actually completely inverse of the first one. This is this allows the device to draw more current than if the device was just on one phase. Now this is good and all, but where it really helps is with motors. Look at this picture that I found on Wikipedia. Notice how the power oscillates between all three lines. Now this oscillation can be used to generate an oscillating magnetic field, which allows for smaller and less complicated motor designs. And this is why you should care about this. Three-phase power allows for smaller, cheaper motors. Also, three-phase motors are primarily used in industrial applications and don't find many uses at the home. Therefore, you can find used three-phase motors and use some used three-phase equipment a lot cheaper than the single-phase alternative. So how do you get this three-phase power? Well, unless you live in an industrial complex, chances are not from your power company. That's why they make three-phase converters. And there are three main types of three-phase converters. The first one is a static converter. Now, to call this a converter is being kind. What it really does is jumpstart a three-phase motor and then makes it run on a single phase. Now, this, this means that you have to deregulate the rated power to, by two-thirds. So if you have a three horse motor, you have to deregulate it down to two horse. This is kind of stupid. It's also not very uh, nice to the motor. You'll probably burn up your motor quite quickly doing this. Now the second type is the Cadillac of phase converters. It's a, the digital phase converter. You, can, you also sometimes hear these called as VFDs, although VFD is more for controlling the speed of a motor, but they can also be used to generate a uh, third leg if you do, if one isn't applied. The way these guys work is by converting the input power into DC then turning that DC into pure three-phase power. Now this is so pure that some places that like certain applications require, require real pure three-phase power like CNC mills. So people even though they have three-phase power will use these so that they don't get any disturbances in the three-phase power going to their device. Now for the third and probably most popular phase converter. This is the rotary phase converter. This type of converter uses a idler motor to generate the third leg. These converters can be bought but they can also be built pretty cheaply. All you really need is a three-phase three -phase motor and some capacitors. So let's start, but first let's start talking about how big of an idler motor you're going to need to build one. 
Due to starting amps, your idler motor needs to be 20 to 30% bigger than the biggest load that you intend to start. So if you're starting a two horse motor, your idler needs to be at least three horses. But if you're starting a two horse and a four horse at the same time, then your idler motor needs to be at least seven horsepower. And now I will bring on the confusion. If you have a two horse motor and a three horse motor, you could skate by with a three horse idler. The way you would do this is by starting the idler motor, then starting your two, two horse motor. You will be using your two horse motor to jump start your three horse motor. Now, that's making it a bit tight, but as you see with my build, you can use this to your advantage if you have large loads to start. Now brings the question, how do we start the motor? Well, if you don't like your fingers very much, you can just wrap a rope around the shaft of the idler motor and pull. I don't suggest this, but people have done it. You can also use a single phase motor attached to the three phase mo motor via a belt or some sort, sort of linkage and then turn on the single phase motor first and then turn the three phase motor on. But the way that I like to do it is using starting capacitors. So where do these capacitors go? Well look at this schematic that I made. Look at the starting capacitor bank. You, you will notice that the starting capacitor bank goes to T1 and T3 of the idler motor except that T3 is interrupted by a momentary switch. When you want to turn your idler motor on, you press this switch which will connect the motor to the starting capacitor bank. This will start the motor and then you release the switch and your motor will run happily on. Now I said capacitor bank. The reason I said bank is because you will need a lot of capacitance to jump start a big motor. And the way you do this is by linking together a bunch of smaller capacitors in parallel. But how much capacitance do you need? Well, you need 50 to 100 microfarads per rated horsepower. So if you have a 4 horsepower motor, you'll need 200 to 400 microfarads. You may need to adjust this based on how it starts. You don't want it to jump immediately to high speed because that's harsh on the motor. But you also don't want it to take forever to get to speed because that's also harsh on the motor. Now you may have noticed two additional capacitor banks on the schematic. These banks help to even out the voltage. If you don't have these, you can have too much voltage on one phase and not enough voltage on the other phase. This will allow cause your motors to overdraw on certain phases and underdraw on others. This is really bad because it can lead to a motor burning itself up. Now the rule of thumb is 12 to 16 microfarads per horsepower, but this will vary significantly based on what you're running and what your idler motor is. The only way to find out exactly how much is to just run your idler motor and run the biggest load that you have and adjust your capacitance based on the voltages that you read between L1, L2, L2 to L3, and L2 to L3. So if L1 to L2 is 240, but L1 to L3 is 230, then you'll need to add capacitance to the L1 to L3 capacitor bank. However, if L1 to L3 voltage is 260, then you need to remove capacitance from that bank. I should also know about type of capacitors. For starting compa for the starting capacitor bank, you should use starting capacitors, but you can also use running capacitors. However, for the running compa for the two running capacitor banks, you must use running capacitors. If you use starting capacitors here, they will blow up, which you might want, but I wouldn't suggest it. I don't know, that could be cool. Thankfully, that's all the uh, mind numbing information I have for you. If you'd like to see this written down, I got a write up on my website. You should see it like uh, somewhere down there. I'll put it in later. Anyway, the, in the following videos, you'll see me uh, making, upgrading my uh, current rotary phase converter into a rotary phase converter array. Remember when I said that you could turn on other equipment to jumpstart a larger load? Well, I'm going to be taking that to the max. Anyway, if you're still confused, if you're confused by anything, please uh, ask down below and I'll try to answer the best I can. Now, I should say that I'm not an expert in any of this. This is all this information I just found by Googling. But 
and ask, I'll try to answer. You should also subscribe so that you'll be notified when the next video comes out. You should also go to uh, all this stuff over there. I think it's over there. I'm 90% positive it's over there. If not, go. Big blue bar, it's got stuff on it. Go to it. Go to my website, go to my Instagram, go to my Twitter. Don't go to my Twitter, I don't use it. Just go to my Instagram and website. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks. Bye!